Hey guys, it's the Conversity Turner again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on navigation and pathfinding. We're going to be using a new component called the nav mesh obstacle that is going to tell our agents that there are moving objects within the scene. I'm also going to be introducing a lot of different agents that we can test in the scene and also different ramps and objects in our scene. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so this is a scene that I created to show you how navigation mesh obstacles work. And I also have a lot of different agents in here, a couple of ramps, and then I also label every single one of the patrol points. So I'm going to hit play to show you how it works. So on the left side, you can see the game view and then just about 60 different agents that I have. And then on the right side, you can see the basically the door that is opening and then the agents trying to sneak in. So you can also see that the this is moving from right to left. And I'm going to show you the script implementation that I did for that. One thing to know, though, that is interesting here is when the door is open, the agents, you know, they're sneaking in. And then when it's closed all the way, they're waiting. And then as soon as they get a space, they can they can get in. Another thing is to keep in mind here as well, you can see that how they're jumping from here to here and they're not going all the way around. And that's because they're, you know, they're trying to find their shortest path and the shortest path is gonna be, you know, to do that. You can also see that I have a little bit of a gap between each of the patrol points and, and basically the points. So I ended up changing this a little bit. I didn't want them to go all the way in. And the reason for that is because when I was doing that, they were waiting and some of them were getting stuck. So I changed the radius that is from the patrol point all the way to, you know, to the point where they actually hit it. So what's happening here is they get to it, but they have a minimum distance. When they reach the minimum distance, that's when they know that they have reached that, that patrol point and then they go to the next one. So let me show you, let me show you a couple of things in here that are really important. So if we go into the, into this object, you can now see, and also go into the inspector, you can see that I have a navigation mesh obstacle. And then it also has a value, a carve option that is set to that is set to true. So what that means is going is it means that it's actually carving the nav mesh. And you can basically specify a moving threshold. You can specify, you know, the time that we need to wait until this is stationary for the nav mesh to get, you know, carved. And then you can also tell it where, you know, when to carve it, only when it's stationary, only when it's moving. So you can play with some of these options. You can see that now that I change it to carve only stationary equal to false, the nav mesh is getting regenerated as soon, you know, as soon as this is moving. This is actually going to be more precise because when, you know, when they try to get in and you're going to see here, let's see if we can. So at that point they can get in and then, oops, that one couldn't get in. So we probably need to, to slow these down if we want them to get in in that way. Otherwise it's going to be really hard to reach so one thing one way that we can do that is we can slow down probably how how fast this is moving so we could say you know reach goal over seven seconds instead instead of what i originally had that way the agents will have more time to reach to their goals let me let me actually hit play to stop the game and then i'm just gonna say you know every 10 seconds i'm going to this is going to reach to a goal so the way that this works is I have a max call, and if you look at the if we look at the properties here, and I'm gonna go gonna go out of the navigation so I can expand this. So if we look at the positioning here, I have negative 12.44, I have 121, and then negative 490.93. So what I did is I say okay, I want to reach up to this level. So I set up the the same x, the same y, and then I'm just telling the system to go you know negative seven negative seven point eight from the from where, where is that right now that way it'll move all the way here and then i save the original position so that it can go back to where it was so if i set this to 10 and we set this to not carve when it's stationary meaning that it's going to carve the nav mesh when you know when things are moving then the i think the chances of this of, of the navigation agents getting into it's going to be higher because they're going to have a time they're going to have time to evaluate the nav mesh and let's see if we can get if we can get into that point. And and they're going see they're going in the opposite direction because they, there's a door on the way so they're going back here, and then they're coming back through. Let's see if we can get any of them, any of them in. If not, we'll just set it back to. Well, it looks like actually one got in. 
that was able to get into that location. Let's see if we get back here. The other thing that we can do is we could probably start right about here. That way they'll have, they'll have more time to evaluate the nav mesh. So if we go ahead and hit play, we can see if they'll have some time to get into it. And yep, nope, they couldn't get into it on time. So let's go ahead and, and move it back a little bit more and then see and see what we get this time. And the other thing that we can do is we can also change the speed of how fast they're going. See, this one's got in, this one's got in, and then this one's cannot get in. And then they're going, they're going back through. So I think I think I'm gonna leave it as it is. I like how that works. And that way they'll have some time to get in, and then yeah, so we'll keep the door at that point. So the other things that we could have done too as well, we can go into geometry. And you can see that I now have a lot of different agents, which I said it was about 60. So the other thing that we can do is we can go ahead and select them all. And then I'm gonna look at the nav mesh agent. And right now the speed is set to 15. So we could say, you know, we could double the speed and see how many of them can get in before. So you can see they're going much faster, much faster. They're trying to get in and there's a lot of them getting in. A lot of them getting in and only one couldn't get in, but he's going back and then going in the other direction. So this is super interesting because, you know, you, you have some agents getting in, some other agents cannot get in, but the, you know, the logic on the, on the navigation mesh and the, and the actual algorithm, algorithm is working just fine. So I'm just going to hit play and I'm going to set it back to, set it back to 15. So the other thing that I did for this video is not only I did a lot of different agents, but I also started working on ramps. I wanted to do something different where, you know, I, I could do ramps and and the agents could go up. So one thing that I could have done here is we could have add another another different ramp so that I can show you how this works. So let's say that we wanted we want the agents to go up even higher. So one thing that I could do is I could just clone all of these ones and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to, to do that. So and then I'm just gonna put the ramp right around here and we can probably there we go. I think that's good. And then let's just go in a little bit more. Let me go ahead and go into orthographic view so that we can focus on on the right. There we go. So everything is aligned and, and symmetrical. And we can do a little bit there. Let me just go into this view. And let me make sure that everything is aligned properly. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to, to me, any, everything needs to be look, look good. And there we go. Okay, so I think that that looks good. So then the other thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and add another ramp. I'll just move this ramp and then put it right there. And we can probably just make it double the size that it is right now. So we have, we can probably do 630, right about 630, there we go. And then I'll just, that way we can get some of the agents to, to go here and then they can basically go around and go down. So I'll just move these down. Okay, how about we make it bigger than that? Let's go ahead and make it 20. I'm just curious to see. And yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. And then what we'll do is we'll put we'll put it right here and then they can they can come back down. Okay, and let me make it a little bit smaller actually because Okay, there we go. A little more smaller than that. There we go. And then I'll just bring it in a little bit more. I think it was it was just too much. Okay, so what we have right now is we have a couple more, basically more floors. That's what I call them. Let me go. Let me go ahead and put them in order. So I'm gonna put them right there. I'm gonna call them floor. And then the other thing that I want to do, I want to make sure that I have how many points I have. I have six, right? And this one right here is the last one. So I'm just gonna clone it. I'm gonna put this one right over here. That way we can get some of the agents to go up. And then I'm just going to, the other thing to notice as well, if you if you can see from here, is we have a collider, right? And I created that on the previous video. This is a capsule collider, but it wasn't a trigger collider. So that's a change that I made to the previous tutorial is I, I didn't I didn't know as a trigger because I didn't want them colliding, the agents colliding with this. It was just creating really different effects. So I ended up just using a on trigger enter and on trigger exit instead of the on collision enter and on collision exit. All right, so I think I think we're good there, and I like how that looks. Let me see how how much 
we are racing from the bottom okay I think that looks fine let's go ahead and go here and this one is gonna be a different number so let's go ahead and increment it this one is gonna be seven and then I'll just rename this one as well here and I'm gonna show you a trick that I found where if we need to do this on multiple objects because if I go into player you can see the player has an array of six elements so if we want to apply you know that new patrol point to all these we don't want to go through each one of them and apply them instead I want to do it you know in a mass so what I'm gonna do and this is something that I did before is I selected I selected them all and you guys probably already know this but I found that it was really cool that I can actually associate a new component through the inspector to multiple components so I'm just going to do seven and you know if you do seven in an array and you already have an element it's going to assign the previous element that was already added but the other cool thing that I found is I could do you can see that I have all of those selected so I can also drag and drop this as soon as all of them are selected as long as all of them are selected you can see that every single one of them get the new patrol point all right so I think that good looks good the other thing that I want to do let's go ahead and add a little bit a little bit more let's maybe add the this little ramp in here so that it doesn't look you know boring it looks it looks cooler and we could probably just rotate it about let's go ahead and do 90 and that means that we might need to make the make these a little bigger not the ramp that I have but the but this the floor and I'm gonna go into my autographic view again okay that looks okay let me make sure there we go it's gonna go in a little bit more so that we can see everything perfectly and then I'll just come down a tiny bit okay let's go into perspective and I think that looks good let's go ahead and move this back maybe about here and there we go okay so one thing that I don't like is we have a little bit of a gap here and maybe that's those are my eyes okay I think I think it looks fine I'm just exaggerating here okay I think that looks great so I think the other cool thing that will be good to have is what if we add a little bit of a tunnel and yeah let's do that let's go ahead and add a tunnel so I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and raise this. I selected I selected them all, and then I'm just raising them. And let's see if I can make this in a way that we can see it through. So I'll just make it all transparent, and then that way we can see we can see everything. The other thing that I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do one. That way, if we do a transparency, it doesn't really add a gap between the tiles. So I think if I do something like that, that will work. And then let me see let me go into local and we can go ahead and rotate it let's see I need to rotate it no nope. not not on that axis I need to do it on Z let me go ahead and try this one more time okay yeah I need to rotate it in multiple because I'm already I, there it's already rotated so that's fine we can just do something like let's go ahead and go into ISO mode and then this view that way I can get a perfect, not a perfect, but you know, something that looks, there we go, something like that works fine. And then I'll just duplicate this guy. And let's go ahead and go into perspective. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap these vertices with that. And there we go. And then let's do the same thing with this one. Just going to snap that one with this. And I think this one is incorrect. There we go. And then I'll just move this one back. And then now I can see that this is bigger. That's okay. We'll just and the reason for that is because let's see. Oh yeah, I made I made it just way too big. Go back into ISO. And it's crazy how much magic you can make with you know with a cube, how much stuff we can get done. Okay, so and that's probably the reason why I created a game called Cubics. Because I really like that style. Alright, so I think I think this is okay I think that's fine it doesn't need to be perfect so the other thing that I want to do let me let me rename this and then we'll add some different style to a different material to the tunnel and then we'll just do floor here and then this step it's going to move right here with the other steps so everything is organized awesome and okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into material I'm going to create a new material this one is just going to be a tunnel material 
and I'm going to associate that with this one right here. Hopefully, I select them right, that one, and then that one. Awesome. So now let me go ahead and make sure that they have the proper material. So this one does, this one does, and this one does as well. Perfect. So what I want to do is I want to add some transparency. So let me go ahead and collapse the box collider. And then we'll just make this transparent. We can do either do transparent or we can just do a fade. I think fade will look better. And then I can just do something like this. Yeah, I think that that works perfectly. And let me try let me try something different here and then change the smoothness. Okay, I think I like that. What if we do a transparent? Okay, now transparent. I don't like transparent. I think I like how fade looks. And we can go all the way black. That way we don't see. There we go. I think that looks really cool. All right, so now we have a tunnel. We have a new patrol point that the AI is going to be visiting and then they're going to go they're basically going to go up this tunnel and then come here and then come back down let's see if everything works but before we run this we're gonna we're gonna have to rebake everything so i'm just gonna go here into my bake object and then rebake and you can see that so a couple of things in here i don't want him to be walking on the on the ceiling here so this one we're going to go ahead and go into object and this one is not walkable so i'm just gonna make it not walkable and this one as well the walls shouldn't be walkable so I'm going to make that one not walkable and, and also this one right here, it's not going to be walkable. I'm going to go into bake and we're going to be rebaking everything. There we go. So that looks way, way better. All right. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to align our camera angle a little bit better. And then we're going to be, I think we can go back a little bit more right about there. Really want the to be able to see the patrol points better so maybe we'll just tilt it a little bit and we can okay so i think i think that's perfect i really like how it looks so let's go ahead and hit play and see what we get okay so we're seeing the agents going to patrol three and then four we got five it's gonna close the other one's gonna go the other direction some more going up we got a couple of them going up through the tunnel and then getting the, you know, to the last patrol point number seven. I'm going to go ahead and focus in here so we can see better as well as they go into that tunnel. Let's go ahead and focus on that. You can see how they go into patrol point and they're coming down. So everything is working fine. I'm really happy how this looks. So just as a summary, I show you how you could do and use the nav mesh obstacle. I didn't really explain it really well, but let me just show you a couple of the options before we wrap it up. One of them is going to be the shape of the moving object. So if you're using an object that has kind of like a box shape, then this is going to be the obstacle that you want to choose. Otherwise, you can use a capsule. You can also offset it if you want to change the, the center. This is just a vector, a vector three. And then the size is also a vector three. You can resize that if you like. And then carve means that if you want to carve the nav mesh, Otherwise, it's going to happen. This is going to happen automatically. And then you can you have some options to determine, you know, how the carve happens, if it happens only when it's stationary or if it happens when the object is moving. So I think I'm going to call it good, guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.